let's be honest. What a strange way to celebrate Easter. We have been in confinement for a full month now. Oh, at the beginning of the crisis, we hope it would be shorter. We hope we would be back in our church building after only two weeks. We hope that all of this would be a distant memory by now, but nope, it's not the case. We're still stuck in our houses. We're still in front of our screens. I don't know about you, but this is probably the worst Easter weekend I've experienced in my life. Oh, pff, like others, of course, we have adapted. We have learned how to use uh, new devices and technologies. At my congregation, we have discovered how to worship via Facebook Live. And some are helping by recording scripture reading and godly play lessons on their phone. And all of this is great. But it does not feel quite the same. I personally, I miss the music. I miss seeing the face of the people. I miss the energy of being together on Sunday morning. This way of being the Church of God is, let's be honest, uncomfortable. And to pretend otherwise would be an insult to intelligence. No. The disciple probably felt the same sense of unsettledness at the beginning of today's reading. Their collective dream of a world, a new world, has come to an abrupt end. Jesus was dead, his body was laid in a tomb, hope was gone. And because life has to go on, heavy-hearted Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb on the first day of the week. And the text tells us that it was still dark. And do you remember what I have been said in the last few weeks about time in the Gospel according to John? Here, darkness does not necessarily refer to a very early morning, but rather to the fact that she did not know yet about Jesus' resurrection. She was still in the dark. And even when she saw that the stone has been removed, and even when she discovered with the other disciples that the tomb was empty, Mary Magdalene did not understand what happened. And as she stood weeping outside the tomb, Jesus came to her. But like the disciples on the road of Emmaus, or Peter and his friends fishing on the Sea of Tiberias, Mary Magdalene did not recognize Jesus immediately. She thought she was she thought he was a simple gardener who stole the body of her master. It is only when she was called by her name that her eyes opened. Jesus was standing in front of her. And several other post resurrection stories, many disciples went through a similar experience. And when they met Jesus, they had this strange feeling, you know, it was him, but not quite him. But it was still him. And through all of this, they discover that resurrection is completely different from resuscitation. You see, in the grave, God did not pull some sort of a magic paddle on Jesus to reanimate him, like, poof. No. Jesus was not simply brought back to life. He was transformed. And this fact is at the core of the whole concept of resurrection. Resurrection implies a different way of being. It means to see the world from a different angle. It signifies it signify 
a profound change in how life is lived. However, Mary Magdalene did not want this sort of transformation. No, no, she wanted to cling to Jesus. She wanted everything to be like before. She wanted to resume her life as if nothing, nothing happened. But unfortunately for her, it was not possible. She could not go back to the past as wonderful and as pleasant as it was. No, she had to accept the present and build a different relationship with the risen Christ. She had to adapt to a new reality. She had to believe that all of this, all that happened, was not the end of her story with Jesus. It was only the beginning of a new chapter. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse, just a new chapter. Like Mary Magdalene, we are all invited to progressively discover the meaning of the good news of the resurrection in our lives. And even if we want to cling to our past, we want to cling to our comfortable practices, to cling to our beloved collective rituals, we might not have the choice these days to learn to live into a new reality. Nevertheless, we are still called to discover where God manifests God's selves in the strangest place, in the strangest ways. We are still asked to believe that wherever we are and however we communicate with one another, we continue to play an important part in the building of the kingdom of God. We are still encouraged to see in the empty tomb of the first Easter morning an opportunity to refashion our faith and our spirituality today. On this Easter morning, very strange Easter morning, we might wonder how can we proclaim the good news of the resurrection in this world of confusion, grief, and social distancing. Well, baby, we should do it because we continue to believe is always with us. God is always with us despite all the challenges we face. Maybe we should do it because this is the story our world might need the most right now. Maybe we should do it because it is in such a time like this that the, signific the signification of Jesus' resurrection becomes a little more accessible, a little more understandable for all of us. My friend, may the risen Christ continue to be present in your lives and bring you hope on this special day. Alleluia and Amen.